Peter Stern, Chief Strategy Officer of Time Warner Cable. Peter, you're a smart guy. Whether or not cable has a future, clearly the entertainment business has a future. If you're still around, I mean, you'll certainly be around, but if you're still at TWC in 15 or 20 years, do you think the company will be using the word cable? <laughs> you know, we've, uh, we think our name actually has a lot of positive attributes. So for now, we're sticking with Time Warner Cable. Uh, that being said, we're not using cable or letting cable limit us. Uh, we've launched wireless data service in most of our markets. Uh, we've skipped 1G, 2G, and in most cases 3G, and gone right to 4G uh, cellular mobile so our customers can get the fastest internet anywhere. So I would say that we'll still be Time Warner Cable, but you'll think about cable in a very different way at that point. So as a cable company now, you're competing against the traditional telecoms? Yes, we are. We're offering mobile broadband service in competition with AT&T and Verizon and, and others like them. And they're big and formidable companies, that's for sure. But the customers who've taken mobile broadband from us really enjoy it. It's a simple product. It's just the fastest internet you can get. And that's something we really believe in. On top of that, the applications you want are the applications you choose. Uh, you can get voice if you want to use Skype, that's fine. We'll port our voice applications over that to that over time. If you want to watch video on that, uh, right now you can get web video, but we've increasingly formed relationships with companies like ESPN, where we're allowing customers to be able to watch the television programming that they paid for in their home. They can access that over the mobile broadband connection we provide outside the home. That's so TV everywhere? That's what we call TV everywhere. And the idea behind TV everywhere is if you paid for video, you should be able to access it anywhere. We just have to make sure. Which seems I mean, another no-brainer to It me. does. I think that the, uh, the, the entertainment business has grown up by basically taking a, a set of rights around programming and carving it up into smaller and smaller pieces. Uh, and so that's why you see a movie come out in the theater, then it's not available in the theater, it's available on DVD, then it's not available on DVD, it's available on HBO or another pay network on a cable network, what they're doing is they're slicing up those rights. Some entertainment companies have tried to slice rights up not just based on time, but based on physical location. I think it's our belief that a better way to do it when it comes to physical location is to simply make sure that the entertainment companies are getting paid the right amount and then not try to limit customers in terms of where they can view content because uh, it's not even clear Right, when you're in your house, if you're a college student, for example, am I, is my dorm my house? Is campus my house? What about when I visit my parents for the holidays? Then that's my house. Ultimately, like your wireless service, your video should follow you anywhere, and we just need to make sure that we keep the economic models evolving to be able to support that type of experience where we move from video being tied to an address to video being tied to an individual. Time Warner Cable is a, a, a national company, an American company. Uh, in the future, will companies like Time Warner Cable, will they have to go global? Will they have to exist in more than one national market? I'm not sure that we actually need to have operations internationally, but I do think that the company is going to have to be much more conscious and engaged with the global community. If you look at the way that um, investment is evolving over time, uh, in the cable business, for example, the uh, Chinese government is investing massive amounts of money in building a cable industry that's capable of doing the sorts of things that we do here in the United States. And so increasingly standards are being set outside the United States. We need to make sure to engage with that broader global community if we want to be relevant and not become an island. Final question, Peter, for you to remain relevant and not be an island. What is cable have to get right in the future, which it currently isn't getting right? You know, I think that we have to migrate from delivering products to our customers to delivering great experiences. We've been very successful in introducing some pretty creative products, services like Startover that allow customers to be able to start over a show at the touch of a button without having to pre-plan or record on a DVR. Uh, or introducing things like multi-room digital video recorders so you can record your shows in advance and watch them anywhere in the house. But where I think we need to evolve is to thinking about 
the entire customer experience end to end. We've taken a step on that with something called Signature Home. Signature Home is a complete product and experience bundle for our customers where they get the fastest internet. They get two multi-room digital video recorder servers with a terabyte of storage inside the home. And they get something that we call a personal solutions agent. And that personal solutions agent is a person who, anytime you call, basically the way that they behave is, I'm here to solve your problem or die trying. That's the kind of customer experience we want to try to create in the future. We want to try to tie it all together so that we can really uh, win not just with product, but deliver a great customer experience end to end. Well, I, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who want to see some cable guys die trying, trying to help them. Thank you, Peter, so much. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it.